All right, ladies and gentlemen. Schmuskies is, is an economics lover, so she's going to help me out here for a little bit. Uh, so this we haven't done in class, but this is kind of the next step here. So when we're talking about our externalities, we know that the, the private markets and individuals on their own, they aren't doing a very good job, or they're not doing as good as they should uh, to produce the, the optimal quantity for everybody, for our entire society. So anytime we have inefficiency, we have this other thing. Think about when we did price ceilings and price floors. Uh, think about when we imposed taxes on things. Uh, what did we get that kind of showed us on the graph that we had inefficiencies? I'm looking for a hand out there. Hand? Anybody? Anybody? Oh, yeah, you, you in the red. Excellent. Yep. Dead weight loss, Mr. Sutton. Bingo. Dead weight loss. Look right here. Dead weight loss. Inefficiency. Oh, Smosky doesn't want to do economics anymore. So we're going to get dead weight loss here, and I'm going to show you how to find it. Uh, it's a little bit easier with the positive externality than it is with the negative. Um, so I'm going to do the positive one first. So if you look here, we've got two uh, equilibrium points. I've erased the free market and the socially optimal here, uh, but hopefully at this point you're remembering. So free market where our private benefits, private costs, or cost curve intersect, right here. Socially optimal here. So we should be producing more. So we aren't getting consumer producer surplus past 100 units here because we're not producing more. So the area of dead weight loss is going to be between this 100 and 150. We should produce 150, but we're only at 100. So this is an area where we need to make more. So this is where our inefficiency is going to be. And it's going to look just like it's looked before. A little triangle kind of like so. Alright? And I'm going to give you, I think I gave you this tip before uh, when we did <clears throat> price controls and how to find your dead weight loss. But you'll notice it makes an arrowhead here. See the arrow? It points to the socially optimal uh, equilibrium point. So that's a way to test yourself, is you make that arrow and you say, oh, that's the socially optimal place right there. The arrow's pointing to it. Now, come over here, it gets a little bit trickier. And this actually came up on the test a couple years ago and uh, stumped a lot of kids, and in fact gave me pause the first time I saw it too. Uh, so this is a little trickier. Here, we're producing too many Yappy yeah, Dogs, because we should have a lower quantity if we worry about everybody's costs and benefits. Uh, because here's socially optimal and here's free market. So the inefficiency again falls between 100 and 150, but look, which is the better quantity or the socially optimal quantity, 150 or 100? 100. So now the trick is that the, this dead weight loss has to point to the 100. Your gut is going to be to do this. I'm going to show you what your gut's going to tell you to do. It's going to be wrong. So you're going to go like this. That's what your gut's going to tell you. But notice you point to the 150. It's got to point to the 100. So you got to switch it. It's not going to be below here. Like so. So there it is. Uh, this is tricky because you think of loss, you think of, of consumer surplus that we didn't get, that we didn't produce. Well, this isn't that we didn't get. We produced 150 units. The thing is, we shouldn't have. We shouldn't have. The costs were too high. The social costs were above our private benefits. So this is this isn't a loss. This is stuff that we. This is surplus. This is inefficiency that we got by overproducing. And that's uh, our dead weight loss there. So we'll talk a little bit more about that one in class, but I wanted to point that out for you here in the video. Okay?